Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Gyan Bhakti. We are currently exploring the scripture Mysticism of Srimad Bhagavatam. Commentary is by my worshipful Gurudev, Swami Jyotirmanand Ji Maharaj, narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilananda. We yesterday uh, studied the episode of Pradyumana uh, and Rati, Kamadeva and Rati. So let's continue. At that time, Mayavati explained to Pradyumna that she was really Devi Rati and that he had previously been her husband, Kamadev. She explained to him that his mission in this incarnation was to destroy Shambhara and then she taught him a secret knowledge of divine love called Mahavidya that would protect him from all demoniac forces and would lead him to victory. The moment Pradyumna became aware of his divine purpose, he picked a quarrel with Shambhara that led to a terrible war between the two. Shambhara used all his demoniac powers and weapons, but Pradyumna was shielded by the Mahavidya he had been initiated into by Rati and emerged triumphant in the battle. After the destruction of Shambhara, Pradyumna and Rati ascended from the netherworld and went to Krishna's palace in Dwarka, where they were welcomed with great joy. Now let us explore the mystical meaning of this episode. Love comes in myriad forms. Love between husband and wife, lover and beloved, parents and children, brothers and sisters, teachers and students. All these forms of love can be ennobling and inspiring if there is a higher insight and spiritual awareness. However, what the majority of people call love usually remains worldly in nature, based on egoistic desires and causing more distraction than inspiration. Such worldly love is represented by the Cupid god Kamadeva. <clears throat> However, as a person treads the path of spirituality, vairagya or dispassion develops, backed up by a rational understanding of the emptiness of the objects of the world. Whenever reason reaches that state of purity, our third eye, the eye of intuition, opens within. <coughs> The moment that happens, our mind is no longer drawn to love that is worldly. Worldly love is then burnt up, so to speak. From the ashes of worldly love, Pradyumna arises. Pradyumna represents the Cupid God transfigured, spiritualized into divine love. That form of love does not flow to the world, but rather to God. Such love elevates inspires and liberates a person rather than causing distraction and bondage. When love is spiritualized, people still maintain their practical realities as fathers, mothers, wives and husbands. However, they understand that it is God who is loved through different human relationships. Human beings are loved, but because they are channels of divine love, the media through which that love is expressed. When such vision develops, we have burnt up Kamadeva. Love that is throated by ignorance, ignorance representing Shambhara the demon, and is confined to shallow human sentiments is in bondage, as if swallowed by the fishy vasanas or subtle desires. It is kidnapped, as it were, from its heavenly abode. However, when we start generating vasanas backed up by meditation, prayer, good association and acts of goodness and magnanimity of heart, the negative impressions in the unconscious are replaced by positive ones. Out of the fishy atmosphere of vasanas comes pradyumna, the hidden potentiality of divine love. As we advance on the spiritual path, that kidnapped love finds the support of rati, the delightful taste of spiritual feeling. Soon as if by a miracle, the infant love, the child Pradyumna, grows into a mighty force rendered invulnerable by Mahavidya, 
the relation that the worshipper and the worship, the lover and the beloved are one. The demon of darkness, Shambhara, is destroyed and human love and its transient delight have now become the twin expressions of God, love and bliss. Pradyumna, the transformed love marries Rati, the transformed feeling of delight, and together they ascend to the royal palace, the realm of transcendence of Krishna. <coughs> Krishna representing Brahman or the Absolute Self. So that was the detail on this episode. Let's move to another interesting episode of Samyantak Mani, the mystic jewel. Satrajit receives the jewel from the sun god. Satrajit was a well-known personality who dwelled in Dwarka, the royal island city ruled by Lord Krishna. He was also a great devotee of the sun god or Surya Devata. As a result of his intense devotion, the sun god was pleased and presented him with a special jewel called Samyantak Mani. Mani it was a it had special magical powers that special um, gem samyantak mani first the whole personality of the person wearing the jewel would shine brilliant like the sun second whoever possessed it became richer and more prosperous every day because the jewel yielded increasing amounts of gold for whoever kept it one day, when Krishna was in the royal palace, relaxing with King Ugrasen's royal ministers and dignitaries, Satrajit entered the palace, wearing the jewel on his neck. When they saw him from a distance, the people said, Behold, O Krishna, the sun god himself is coming to see you. But Krishna smiled and said, This person is not the sun god. He is Satrajit, wearing a special jewel. When Satrajit appeared before Krishna, Krishna said, The jewel that you possess should rightfully be placed in the hands of King Ugrasen. However, Satrajit turned a deaf ear to Krishna's words as if he did not even hear the advice to part with such a wonderful and magical jewel. So from Prasenjit to the lion to Jambavan. So the story continues, time passed and one day Satrajit's brother Prasenjit borrowed the jewel eager to see how it felt. He put it around his neck and rode off to the horse into the forest to hunt for animals. During that expedition a strange lion emerged from the forest, attacked the horse and killed Prasenjit. The lion that took the jewel from Prasenjit's neck neck and he began to play with it. The great bear Jambavan, who even in Rama's time was an ancient personality and very wise, saw the jewel and killed the lion. He then brought the jewel to his dwelling place, which was a big cave, <clears throat> and placed it before his children, who began to play with it like a toy. So Krishna recovers the jewel from Jambavan and marries Jamavanti. So this is the next um, part of the same story, but the next change of the scene. When Prasenjit did not return, Satrajit was afflicted with sorrow. He began to say that Krishna was interested in his Samyantak money and that Krishna must have killed Prasenjit and stolen the jewel. The false allegation started spreading against Krishna forcing him to do something to clear his name. Thus Krishna set out to find the whereabouts of Prasenjit's killer. He entered the forest and saw the bodies of Prasenjit and his horse as well as the body of the slain lion. Then he found the cave where Jambavan lived. Lord Krishna told the others who had accompanied him to stay back and he entered alone into the darkness of the cave. Inside, he saw that jewel radiating its light and some bare children playing with it. Surprised at seeing a stranger, the nurse that was attending to the children cried out, causing Jambavan to emerge from the deeper part of the cave, ready to attack. 
At that time, Jambavan was unaware of Krishna's divine identity. So with this, we will conclude our satsang. I will see you tomorrow. This is Swami Nikhilanand. Om Tat Sat.